Hey, what is up everybody? My name is Imani LaRussa and recently I posted this video. And I've been getting a lot of questions on the clouds on whether I did it frame by frame or if I did it in After Effects and I'm gonna show you how I did it. I did do it frame by frame. As always, we're gonna create a new composition and relabel it clouds. Change the width and height to about 1080 by 1080 and create a time duration of about 10 seconds. Next, we're gonna grab the rectangle tool and create a shape layer. Make sure to create like a slender rectangle that takes up the majority of the width of the composition. Then rename the rectangle. Then we're gonna grab the ellipse tool and create a second shape layer. Hold shift and drag down to make a perfect circle. Then grab the anchor point and snap it to the bottom of the circle. And make sure to relabel that as well because we don't wanna get confused. Next, we're gonna grab the circle and bring it to the top left side of the rectangle. We're gonna create the keyframes for the scale and the position and scale it down to zero on the timeline. Move forward to about three seconds and increase the scale and move the position of the circle to the center of the rectangle. But instead of just having a straight line that goes across the rectangle, we're gonna go a little underneath the top line of the rectangle. Then go forward to about six seconds on the timeline and move the circle to the top right side of the rectangle and scale that down to zero. The reason why we don't go straight across from left to right and we just dive a little underneath the rectangle is to make sure that we don't have a ton of space in between the circle edges and the rectangle top. Next, I'm gonna highlight my keyframes on my scale. Add an easy ease onto the keyframes, then open my value graph. Next, I'm gonna raise the handlebars on the first keyframe and the last keyframe so that the circles scale in and out really quickly. Now we're gonna create duplicates of the circles, add some different variations in size and position, then offset them. I first start off by duplicating three circles and changing the size. These will be our main big circles. Next, I'm gonna offset them so that they have a little bit of space in between each other and that they're not just like overlapping. Then I'm gonna duplicate those and then offset those. This is kind of a randomized thing, so you're gonna be going kind of back and forth to fit what looks best for your clouds. So I'm just gonna go in and tweak it a little bit so that they have some space, so they're kind of different in between each part, because clouds are really random. Now that we have our big circles, we need to create our smaller circles to fill in those tiny little gaps in between the circles. So I'm gonna create another shape layer with the ellipse tool and relabel it small cloud but instead of bringing it to the top left side of the rectangle, I'm gonna bring it to the middle left side of the rectangle. Keyframe the scale and position. So start at zero, move over to about six seconds. Then we're gonna keyframe the position from left to right. Create a keyframe at the end at zero so that it animates out. Then go to the center and then scale just a little bit, enough to fill the gaps in between the big circles. Open the value graph of the speed and we're gonna do the same thing with the handlebars to make sure that they scale in and out really quickly. Now that I have my small circles ready, I can fill in the gaps. So I'm just gonna go in and fill in the gaps. And boom, that's how you make some clouds. That's the end of the tutorial. No, I'm kidding. Could you imagine? No, it'd be bad. Anyways. We're gonna pre-compose this composition and make sure that all of our clouds and our rectangle is inside of it. Then we're gonna add a Gaussian blur to it. I put it to about 70 to 100. So now that our edges are all blurred, we're gonna add levels to it and clean that all up. So change the input to alpha and then move these little triangles over to like the center right side. You don't want it to be too center because you'll notice these jagged edges on the side of it. We just want it enough to that it blurs out the lines. And now you could go in and fix the in and outs of the circles going in, but essentially this is the effect. Add a blue background to it, scale it down with the position and the direction of the clouds are moving, and boom, you got some moving clouds. I don't know about you, but I use clouds a lot. So using this type of technique is definitely going to bump up my animation. So if this was helpful, definitely send me what you have. I would love to check it out, but have a good day guys.